Hey everybody, Aaron here at Warmoth, and today I'm going to try and finish a guitar all by my own self. So we sell tons of finished bodies and necks here at Warmoth. In fact, we are one of the few parts manufacturers that still offers uh, finishing and painting services. Um, that said, we also sell a ton of unfinished stuff. And the reasons for that vary. A lot of people just want to save money and they don't mind the look or the feel of unfinished wood. Um, a lot of people are looking for something that Warmoth doesn't offer, whether it's a color or they want nitro. And some people just want the experience of finishing their own guitar. And it's those last couple groups that I'm hoping to find solidarity with uh, in this video. You know, when it comes to building guitars, I am pretty experienced at it. I've built tons of guitars. I know how to assemble them and set them up and, you know, wire them up and solder and all that stuff. But when it comes to finishing a guitar, I have never done that. I am a complete noob. And so that is where I'm starting from. This is not going to be a step-by-step -step how to guide from an expert finisher. Uh, this is just me finding my way like any other noob and, uh, using all the same resources that you might. Um, and in that same spirit of DIY, uh, I will not be using any of the fancy equipment uh, that we have here at Warmoth. I won't be using our, our spray guns. I won't be using our fancy rotating arms. I won't be doing this in our, you know, sterile uh, paint booth. Uh, we have an old paint booth here that's just sitting in some warehouse space. Uh, and I'll be using that, but it is not, you know, in our normal dust-free environment. It's just something that's sitting in a warehouse, similar to what you might rig up in your garage. I'll still be dealing with dust and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's my pitch. I'm trying to keep it as DIY as possible um, so that we can find out what kind of results you can expect if you're doing this for the first time like I am. Uh, I am going to be finishing one neck and two bodies. I have both of the bodies here. The first one is this Telecaster replacement body and I'm going to be um, doing this one from the ground up, doing all the sealing and the sanding and everything on this myself. The other one I'm going to do is this Strat replacement body and this has our new DIY paint ready option where all that prep work that I was just talking about has already been done by the pros here at Warmoth. And so I don't need to seal and sand this. It's ready, it's ready to be painted. Um, and so it'll be interesting to compare these two. Now let's talk about the paints. The paints I got from, uh, these are Gracie's Vintage Finishes, which are available on uh, madisonmusic.com, I think, but if you just Google Gracie's Vintage Finishes, you'll be able to find these. And I talked to Ben there, uh, who is the owner, and he was so helpful um, in giving me advice, you know, in, on finishing in general, but um, specifically on using their product. So I'm really excited to see how this is going to go. Uh, let me tell you everything that we got from him. Uh, we got some neck amber for the neck. Uh, we got three cans of sealer to seal it up with. Then we have one can of Olympic white as a base coat. And then the color is dark Sherwood green metallic. Uh, that's, that's my preamble, that's my long-winded speech. Uh, let's go paint some bodies. So here we go with the first can of sealer. And I will admit, I was a little nervous, and you can tell I don't really know what I'm doing yet. Especially when I do the edges and I don't move the can to follow the curve, so I end up getting way too close on some surfaces and too far away on others. And look at me trying to spray the heel. I don't have any clue how to hold the body yet. I, I look so cute doing my best. Um, and I'll admit, watching me spray bodies is going to get a little tedious, even at 2,000 times the normal speed. So I'm not going to show you every pass of the spray can. But I am going to show you a lot of them, at least on this body, because I feel like it's important to give you some context about how long this takes. As I go through successive coats of sealer here, you can start to see it build up. And you can also see me getting more comfortable with my technique. 
and I did start to get some splatters, and after a couple of coats I figured out what the issue was. I was placing the tip of my index finger too far forward on the, on the nozzle, and the fleshy part was hanging over within the cone of the, the spray pattern, and I think I couldn't feel it because I had gloves on, um, but the wet paint would form a little droplet on the tip of my finger, and then eventually that droplet would fly off onto the body. And as soon as I realized that and adjusted my fingertip to stay back out of that cone, no more splatters. And the tip of my finger uh, would eventually cause other problems, but we'll get, that, we'll get to that later. And of course, every time I painted, I suited up in this fabulous protective gear. And a bunch more coats of sealer. And then here's a shot that shows how much more comfortable I had already become with my technique. You can see I'm maintaining a uniform distance from the body's surface, uh, especially along the edges. And you can see I have the heel maneuver totally down now. And I was actually glad to have done the sealer first because it did give me a chance to practice and hone my skills before getting to the color and the clear coat. And then here's a sanding and some more sanding and some more sealer and more sanding. And then one great tip I did get from uh, unofficial Warmoth for my duck blue was that when you're sanding, you should be looking for bright spots because that will show you where the low areas are. And this is where I first began to notice one particular part of the body that would absolutely not fill up with sealer. And you can see it pretty easily here. And I also noticed right at the end of that grain line, on the end of the body, there was a little knot in the wood. Uh, and on my third can of sealer, I concentrated on filling that area up. And I got to the point where it was mostly filled, but honestly, I could still see it. And then just for comparison, here's a look at the body that I sealed versus the one that has the Warmoth DIY paint ready option. And you can see on this vintage Strat replacement body, it looks way more pro. It's pretty much perfect. On the body I did, you can see that it just has a different look, which I mostly attribute to, you know, different products being used on each body. And you can see I came dangerously close to sanding through some areas, but after three cans of sealer, I decided to move forward and uh, apply the Olympic white undercoat. And this only took about a half a can and went pretty quickly. Um, and you can also see that my, my technique is continuing to get a lot better. And then finally, Sherwood Green. And I used an entire can of Sherwood Green, and it also went on pretty easily. Uh, in talking with Ben from Gracie's Vintage Finishes, he told me that the metallic sparkle would be a lot more pronounced if I did lots of light layers rather than just a few thick ones. So that's exactly what I did. And also between every coat, I, I made sure to clear the nozzle by turning the can upside down and pressing the nozzle until it sprayed clear. And then you can see right here, I got a little speck of something, um, and it wouldn't be the last, but you know, I just, I kind of poked at it and then moved on. Lots more coats of green. And in the meantime, I also started to work on the other body. And from this point on, everything I do to the green body, I'll also be doing to the red body. I won't show as much because I don't wanna bore you completely to death, but I will be doing all the same steps from this point on. Um, and I will say that having the sealing and sanding already done by pros on this body saved me probably two to three weeks worth of time and sanding. Um, and by the time I got the white undercoat on, it was pretty much looking perfect.
And here, my friends, is where this becomes not just a video, but a hero's journey. After all this spray painting, I developed a blister on my right index finger. But I did my best to be brave, and I taped it up and moved on, uh, spraying the neck with Gracie's medium neck amber. And this was actually the easiest of the three to paint. I mean, as long as you do lots of light coats, it's pretty hard to screw up. You just want to try and keep it from running. And then back to the Dakota Red. And, and right away, I noticed this was looking like a kind of a bright Dakota Red. And maybe I shouldn't have done the white undercoat. I don't know, but that's, that's what I had now. So that's what, that's what it was going to be. Um, and about this same time, I started with the clear coats on the green body. Lots and lots and lots of passes with Gracie's Clear. And this is when I really started struggling with bits of dust and stray hair getting into the, into the mix. Um, and you could really start to see the area that wouldn't seal up. So I decided to concentrate a lot of my ammo in this one area to try and build up enough uh, top coat there so that when it came time to when it came time to level sand, I could sand it all the way down and get it level. And then more hair, you can see that I went after this one with a pair of tweezers, but I felt like I was doing more harm than good trying to get it out. And in the end, I decided just to bury it in clear. So now my DNA will be forever entombed in this body. Sort of like that, uh, that Ibanez that Steve Vai had his blood mixed into the finish. Well, that's how this one will be, except for it'll be one of my hairs. Anyway, uh, again, lost more passes with clear. And the uh, same thing on the red body. And by now my finger was a fiery, throbbing, painful thing, but I was so brave. Hashtag hero's journey. And then finally after all that, it was finally time to level sand and buff. And I did a lot of research here, a lot of soul searching, and in the end I decided to wet sand. But now I will tell you, Warmoth does not wet sand in our finishing process. And since the dawn of time, we have had a big warning on our website urging users not to wet sand. So if you do, you do so at your own risk. Me doing it here is not an endorsement from Warmoth. This is me taking a risk just like you would be. Uh, because getting water down you know, in, into the wood can totally ruin your body. It'll make the wood swell and it can pop glue joints. It can make the paint peel off. So I hope that's enough of a disclaimer. If you decide to wet sand, you are on your own. But I, I did a lot of research and, and this nitro is different than the finished process that Warmoth uses. And pretty much everyone I talked to said it was the way to go. So I decided to risk it. Um, but to make double sure that no water got down inside the small holes, I, um, I plugged them all up with screw wax. Uh, the top and the bottom ferrules and the neck holes, I plugged those all up with wax to keep water from getting down in there. And then I took a small bowl of water, just a few dro drops of hand soap, and then I used an eraser as a sanding block, as you can see. And I started with 800 grit, worked my way up to 2000. And again, you can see I'm not using a ton of water, just a little bit, sand in a small area, and then wipe it back to check uh, the progress and make sure that there's no water getting any place I don't want it to. But eventually I was ready for the buffing phase. And for this, I use Meguiar's buffing compound, again, at the recommendation of Duck Baloo from Unofficial Warmoth. Uh, I started with 105 and then I did the final coat with 205. And in this process, I learned another vital newbie lesson. When you are doing the ketchup bottle shake to get the, um, you know, to get the compound to, towards the nozzle so you can squirt it out, you want to be squirting it into your rag, not onto the body. Because if you accidentally shake the bottle a little too hard and it accidentally slips out of your hand, you could accidentally put a little dent in your new finish right above the neck pickup cavity. Just saying.
Uh, I went through all the same steps with the red body, and I actually did find the red body a little more difficult because, um, you know, on a strat style body, you have two horns to do instead of one, and those are the hardest parts to get into and properly polish. But also because on these kinds of bodies, the edge radius is a little bigger, so it's a little harder to make a nice transition from the top and bottom surfaces to the edge surfaces. And now, after almost two months, here I stand with the finished pieces. I've actually had a haircut since this video started, uh, and I'm almost ready for another one, I think. Uh, but anyway, here is the green body, and I'm just so proud of the way these things turned out. I think they're really good first effort. Uh, they're not perfect. You know, you can see on this one, I never actually managed to get this level. I see if I can get it in the light for you here. You can still see that line right there that goes through the control area. I just, I filled and filled and sanded and sanded and I could not get that level. Uh, other mistakes, there's a little chip right there near the uh, top ferrule hole that happened when I was cleaning the wax out. Right here is the little dent I made with the Meguiar's lid, which was a stupid thing to do. Uh, but other than that, you know, it's got a nice uh, reflective polish on both sides. It just, it looks really great. Here's the neck. The neck is not quite done. Uh, ben warned me when sanding the, the face of the headstock to be careful on the edges that I might burn through, and of course, I did. Uh, so I'm in the process of redoing the neck. It's not done yet. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and shoot this video anyway. It's really mostly about the bodies, but here you can see the, uh, the medium neck amber, kind of the color it gets, which is just about what I like. Um, and this is going to look great once it's all done, uh, assuming that I can get it right. And here's the red body, and this also turned out great. And because I started with the DIY paint ready option on this, there are no dips or weird places that didn't fill. All the contours are perfect on the front and back. Just really nice. You can see it's got a nice shiny reflective surface. Uh, the only bad thing about this body is if you look real close, there are lots of little like pinhole depressions. Um, and I know exactly why they're there. It's because I didn't level sand it deep enough to get a perfectly uh, flat, smooth surface. But after burning through on the neck, I was just, I was too timid. I was so afraid I was gonna burn through that I didn't go deep enough. And even now, if I wanted to, you know, keep sanding it down, I could get that nice, smooth surface. But I just decided to stop where I was. Um, you know, if I were, if this were a personal thing, uh, I would be totally happy with where it is. Uh, I think it looks, I think it looks really good. And that DIY paint ready option saved me about probably two to three weeks worth of, worth of spraying and sanding. So um, it's definitely worth considering if you're going to, if you're going to paint it yourself. Um, but overall, I mean, I'm really proud of the way these turned out. They're a solid first effort. And I feel a lot like I did, um, after assembling my first guitar. You know, it wasn't perfect, but I learned so much and, and understood the whole process better than I ever had. Um, and that's exactly how I feel about these. And then once again, I want to thank uh, Ben at Gracie's Vintage Finishes, which you can get at madisonmusic.com. Um, just so you know, he supplied all the stuff for the green body for free. And our original plan was to buy the, the stuff for the red body at the hardware store. But after doing the green body and, and seeing the quality of that product, uh, we bought all of the stuff we needed for the red body at full price. So he supplied that. We paid for this at full price. And if I were doing a personal project right now, I would use Gracie's Vintage Finishes without hesitation. I was very happy with the quality of that product. And since you are still here, since you made it to the end of this long video and all my jibber jabbering, I am gonna go ahead and give this body away. So if you wanna crack at winning this body, in the comments post hashtag Hero's Journey. And uh, I will pick one of those at random to receive this body. You'll get it exactly the way it is. You won't get to choose any options or anything like that. It is a vintage Stratocaster replacement body cut for three single coils and the vintage style six screw tremolo. Uh, it has the um, Bormuth DIY paint ready base coat and then the color and top coat were done by yours truly and they are not perfect. 
they're maybe what I would call uh, lightly relict. Um, there'll be no warranty or anything like that. You'll get it just like it is. But if you want to crack at it, post that hashtag in the comments. And yeah, that's it. That is my experience painting some guitar bodies for the first time all by my own self. Uh, I learned a lot and hopefully you did too. Uh, hopefully if you're considering it, it gave you the confidence to go for it. If you are a, if you're an experienced painter and you are clutching your pearls and shrieking at all the horrible things I did wrong, tell me what they were in the comments. Tell me all the things I did wrong so that the next time I can do them right. And if you want to know more about Warmoth's uh, DIY paint ready option, uh, about our finishes in general, or anything related to Warmoth, make sure and check out our website or give our customer service reps a call. And until next time, keep on picking!